Welcome to class of design of massing elements. I am Nitesh Rehani, Assistant Professor at LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. This is class 19, Spherical Cells. The learning outcomes of these lectures is to learn the spherical cells subjected to internal pressure. Also, we will see common examples in this lecture based on the spherical cells subjected to internal pressure. So let's start our lectures. Now, these are uh, spherical cells subjected to internal pressure. So consider the spherical cells or uh, which subjected to internal pressure P. Here you can see the intensity of pressure P is applied on the thin spherical cells and T is the thickness of sphere. Now let's <coughs> V is the volume capacity of this cell. P is the intensity of internal pressure, D is the diameter of cell, T is the thickness of cell and sigma D is the permissible tensile stress for the given material or cell material. Now, as we seen the spherical cell shown in a figure, to design the spherical cell, uh, we have to determine first diameter of cell and second thickness of cell. So first we consider uh, the spherical cells and uh, we calculate the diameter of spherical cell. As the, the cell is in shape of spherical cell, so we know the capacity of spherical cell that is the volume of spherical sphere. That is V is equal to 4 by 3 into pi r cube. Or you can say in terms of diameter, it is pi by 6 into d raised to cube, into d cube. Or if you simplify these equations, you get the d is equal to 6v divided by pi raised to one third power. So this is the diameter of cell according to the uh, volume capacities of particular pressure pressure. Now, second thing we have to calculate the thickness of cell. So, as shown in a figure here, you can see the pressure intensity is P and thickness of sphere is T. So, to calculate the thickness of cell, we have to use the balance equations for the force. So, we have to balance the force acting on cylindrical, uh, sorry, acting on spherical cell subjected to internal pressure. So, here pressure P is applied. So, bursting force is equal to pressure into area. As P is the pressure intensity, so we have to write P in, term, in place of pressure and area which we have to write projected area of pressure. So, here you can see the projected area of pressure is the pi by 4 into d square. So, these are the equations and gives equation 1. Now, as the pressure is applied on spherical cell, the opposite in opposite direction, there will be the resisting force is generated. So, and the resisting force of the cell is, so here the resisting force is generated and the resisting area in this spherical cell is shown by the has. So whatever the has and has area, that is the resisting area and <coughs> sorry, and we have to calculate the resisting force when we apply the pressure or P on spherical cell. So resisting force is equal to stress into resisting area. So here we have to consider stress is what? Permissible stress that is sigma t and resisting area. Here the S portion is shows the resisting area. So resisting area is nothing but the pi d into t. So if we place the value of stress and resisting area, we get resisting force of cell is equal to sigma t into pi into d into t. So this is the resisting force gives the equation number 2. As we learned in previous lectures also, we have to balance, we have to equate these two equations 
because these two equations is the force equations and this all both force are equal and in opposite directions. So we have to equivalent these two force to get the thickness of spherical cell. Now, so from one equations one and two. So from equations one and two we have so. If the equivalent equations 1 and 2, we get P into pi by 4 d square is equal to sigma t into pi into d into t. So this is the uh, generalized equations when we uh, equivalent this equation from equation 1 and 2. Now we have to calculate the thickness of spherical cell. So, from these two equations, we have to simplify these equations and uh, if we simplify the above equations, we get that t is equal to p into t divided by 4 into sigma t. So this is the thickness of spherical cell subjected to internal pressure p. Now, in this equation, sigma t is the permissible stress of spherical cell material. Now, in what happens, sometimes the joint efficiency is given. So, if beta is the efficiency of circumferential joint of spherical cell, at that time, you have to consider the efficiency and the thickness uh, equations can be modified as T is equal to P into D divided by 4 into eta into sigma T. So, this is the equations of spherical cell when we consider the efficiency of circumferential joint. So these two equations you have to use when you design spherical cells subjected to internal pressure. Now, next is the, uh, consider one example based on the spherical cell, thin spherical cell subjected to internal pressure. Now we know the, what is the thickness of spherical cell, what is the equations of uh, thickness of spherical cell and diameters of particular spherical cell. Now consider one example. Example 1. A spherical vessel 3 meter diameter is subjected to an internal pressure of 1.5 Newton per mm square. So here the diameter of spherical cell or vessel is given that is 3 meter and internal pressure of 1.5 Newton per mm square is given. So here P is given that is 1.5 Newton per mm square. Find the thickness of vessels required if the maximum stress is not to exit 90 megapascal. Here the maximum stress is not to exit 90 megapascal means what? Why it is given the permissible stress. And we know the permissible stress that is sigma t is equal to 90 megapascals and also take the efficiency of joint as 75 percent so here efficiency eta is given so n is equal to 75 percent so first we collect the data according to this problem so here d is 3 meter or you can say 3000 mm p is 1.5 newton per mm square Sigma t is 90 megapascals or in terms of Newton per mm square, 90 and Newton per mm square, n is equal to 75% or is equal to 0.75. So this is the data given and what we have to find, we have to find the thickness of this spherical cell. So as we know the equations of thickness, so t is p into d divided by 4 into eta into sigma t. So, S P is given 1.5, D is 3000 and eta is equal to 0.75 and sigma T is given 90 megapascals so or 90 newton per mm square. So, if we place all these values in these equations, we get the thickness of this spherical cell, cell or vessel is 16.7, say the 18 mm. So, these are the answer what we want. So according to given uh, problems, the thickness of spherical cell is 18 mm. Now next is changing dimension of a thin spherical cell due to an internal pressure. 
So, as you can say, uh, first consider the nomenclature that is D is the diameter of cell, T is the thickness of cell, P is the pressure intensity, E is the Young's modulus, and U is the Poisson's ratio. So, as we know, the delta V is the final volume minus original volume. As the pressure vessel is subjected to internal pressure, there may be changing uh, volume of spherical pressure vessel. So, delta V is final volume minus original volume. And here the pressure vessel is a spherical cell. In spherical cell, uh, you can say the volume of spherical cell is equal to pi by 6 d cube. But so according to that, final volume is pi by 6 into d plus small d raised to power 3. So here the pi diameter pi for the final volume is considered d plus delta d. Delta d is the changing diameter. So minus original volume, original volume pi by 6 into d cube d. So in this equation delta d is equal to p into d square divided by 4 d e into 1 minus d. Give the equation number 1. This equation is derived by the use of Poisson's ratio formula uh, and the delta D is becomes PD square upon 4 T e into 1 minus nu. Give the equations 1. Now, in above equations, uh, if we simplify these equations and neglecting the higher order terms, we get the delta V e is equal to pi by D into 3 D square into delta D. So here in this equation we neglect in the higher terms order. So delta V becomes 5 by 6 into 3 D square into delta D. Now if uh, we substitute in the delta D value, so here in above equations there are delta D and we have a value of delta D that is P D square divided by 4 D e into 1 minus mu. So from equations 1 we have to substitute in the delta D value in our above equation. So if we substitute the value of delta D and we simplify this equation, then delta V becomes 3 pi D square divided by 6. So into P D square divided by 4 T E into 1 minus 2. Further if we simplify this equation, then delta V becomes pi D Sorry, delta D, delta V becomes pi into P D raised to 4 divided by A T E into power 1 minus nu. So this is the change in volume due to the internal pressures. Now consider one basic problem that is the example 2. A seamless spherical cell 900 mm in diameter and 10 mm thick is being filled with a fluid under a pressure until its volume increase by 150 into 10 raised to 3 mm cube. Here a thin seamless spherical cell is given and diameter of this cell is 900 mm and thickness of cell is 10 mm and the cell is filled by the fluid until its uh, volume is increased by 150 into 10 raised to 3 mm cube. So here the delta V is given and calculate the pressure exert, exerted by the fluid on the cell taking modulus of elasticity for the material of cell as 200 kilo newton per mm square. So E is given and Poisson's ratio you have to take as 0.3. So this is the given problems consider as a vaccine problems and do it yourself, we will discuss in next lectures. So in this lectures, we learn the thin spherical cell subjected to internal pressures and also we will be seeing uh, one example based on the spherical cell subjected to internal pressure. Thank you.